Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to use bond enthalpies to determine enthalpy changes in chemical reactions. I'm showing you here the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to form water. Now all of the chemicals involved in this reaction contain chemical bonds and I'm showing you those here. Now a key idea you need to understand is that during a chemical reaction we first need to break all of the chemical bonds in the reactant molecules and I'm showing those bonds in green. In order to break chemical bonds, we need to put energy into the reaction. In other words, breaking chemical bonds is an endothermic process. Once we've done that, we can form the chemical bonds in the product molecules, and I'm showing those bonds in red. When we make chemical bonds, energy is released from the reaction. In other words, making chemical bonds is an exothermic process. Now scientists have determined the energy required to break chemical bonds. These values are called average bond enthalpies. I'm showing you the definition of average bond enthalpy here. Average bond enthalpy is the energy needed to break one mole of a specific bond in a molecule in the gaseous state. And you need to understand that the energy required to break a specific bond will have the same value as the energy released when that bond's formed. So why are they called average bond enthalpies? I'm showing you here three different molecules. All of these molecules contain carbon to hydrogen bonds. Now the bond enthalpy of a specific bond depends on the molecule that we find that bond in. So the bond enthalpy of the carbon to hydrogen bond in methane will be slightly different from the bond enthalpy of the carbon to hydrogen bond in methanol and the bond enthalpy of the carbon to hydrogen bond in methanol. So scientists take an average value for the bond enthalpies across a range of different molecules. OK, so how do we use average bond enthalpies? Well, let's go back to our first reaction. We're going to use average bond enthalpies to determine the enthalpy change of this reaction. Before we start, you'll notice that I've included state symbols, and I'm showing water as a gas. That's because average bond enthalpies are determined for molecules in a gaseous state, and I'll be discussing that again later. First, we need to show all of the bonds present in the molecules. I'm also showing you the average bond enthalpies of the bonds involved. Next, we need to add up all of the average bond enthalpies for the bonds that we need to break in the reactant molecules. We've got two hydrogen to hydrogen bonds, and I'm showing these in green. These have an average bond enthalpy of 436 kilojoules per mole. Because we've got two of these bonds, we need to multiply 436 by 2. This gives us a total of 872 kilojoules for the hydrogen to hydrogen bonds. We've got one oxygen to oxygen double bond and I'm showing that in red. This has an average bond enthalpy of 498 kilojoules per mole. Now there's one important point about this. The average bond enthalpy applies to the whole double bond. We do not need to multiply it by two because the bond is a double bond. Okay, now these values tell us the total energy needed to break all of the bonds in the reactant molecules. Adding these together, gives us a total of 1,370 kilojoules. Remember that we're breaking these bonds, which is an endothermic process. We have to put energy into the reaction, so this is a positive number. Now we need to add up the average bond enthalpies of the bonds that we form in the product molecules. We've got four oxygen to hydrogen bonds, and I'm showing those in orange. These bonds have an average bond enthalpy of 463 kilojoules per mole. We've got four of these bonds, so we need to multiply this number by four. This gives us a value of 1,852 kilojoules. Remember that forming bonds is exothermic, so energy is released. This means that we have to give this number a negative sign. To calculate the enthalpy change of the whole reaction, we simply add these numbers together. This gives us a value of minus 482 kilojoules per mole for the reaction. As you can see, this reaction is exothermic. Now I should point out that this does not show us the standard enthalpy change of this reaction. Remember that average bond enthalpies are determined from molecules in a gaseous state. However, under standard conditions, water is a liquid. In the next video, I'll give you a question to try yourself.